Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're gonna to be diving into Premiere Pro and color grading this shot from this to this, and I'll be walking you through step by step exactly how and why I change the settings I do to get the results I do. So without further ado, let's dive into Premiere Pro and get this video started. All right, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro, and as you already know, this is the shot we are color grading. Now, this was shot on the Sony zv one in S-Log3 on the 24-70 f2.8 from Sigma, and we'll be color grading it without a conversion LUT and without using any of my cinematic LUTs. Now, if you don't know about my cinematic LUTs, I have a huge pack of cinematic LUTs that I have been using for years now to color grade all of my footage. And if you want a very easy and speedy way to be able to color grade your footage, like that and get your footage looking absolutely amazing. You can go and pick up my cinematic LUTs linked in the description down below. You can use this discount code at checkout to get a cheeky little discount. But anyway, today we're not gonna be using them because of course that wouldn't be showing you all that much. So we're not using any LUTs, we're gonna be color grading everything from scratch. Okay, so let's dive in. We are, just to kind of set the tone, we're in the color panel up here. So as soon as you open Premiere Pro, you're not gonna be met with something that looks like this. You've gotta to navigate to the color panel up here. And let's first start off in the basic correction tab. First thing I wanna do is decrease the shadows, increase our contrast and increase the highlights. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because already, if we just turn off Lumetri color here, you can see that we're getting all of our contrast back and we're bringing quite a lot of color back into our shots purely just by decreasing our shadows, which kind of makes things a little darker, increasing our highlights, which makes the bright parts a little darker, and then increasing the contrast does both of those just in one slider and it brings a whole lot more of a true to life image to our shot. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here. And we're gonna be backing that up with a little bit of an S curve. So we're gonna put a point here uh, on this first cross section, which is the shadows. We're also gonna put a point here on the midtones, and we're also gonna put a point here on the highlights. I'm first gonna drop the shadows to make sure we're getting that richer tone back. I'm then gonna increase the midtones, which is something we don't have a slider for in the basic tab. And then I'm also going to increase our highlights. And then if we turn the metric color off, and back on, you can instantly see we are at, a, I would say a usable version of this clip by far, and we've used no LUTs whatsoever. Now there is a nice way you can check if you've added a good amount of contrast back into your shots. If you come over to Lumetri Scopes up the top left here, by the way, if it's not open, all you've got to do is open up help, type in Lumetri Scopes, and then you can turn it on. So if you open up Lumetri Scopes, it also might not look like this. And if it doesn't, all you've got to do is right click and make sure you've got waveform and vector scope turned on. And then we can see here our entire exposure of our shot. So we can see we're definitely on the lower side. It's a little bit more of a darkier, moodier shot, which is fine. I'm happy with that. And if I turn Lumetri color off here, which is just our color grade, the scope's really compressed, which means there isn't a lot of contrast. If I turn it back on, that means the image is contrasty and you can see it's, it's spread out nicely. Nothing's touching the bottom, which means nothing is clipping, which is nothing is pure black and nothing is touching the top, meaning nothing is too bright and nothing is just pure white. Okay, that's the basics down. We have got the basic correction done. Now we can get on to the coloring of things. Now, of course, you can go a little deeper and make sure you're absolutely fine tuning every single aspect of this shot to make sure you know, you've got your contrast dialed in, but I'm really happy with how this looks. If anything, we might drop the shadows just a little bit more and increase the highlights a little bit more. That kind of brings up the exposure of our subject here, and then I'm happy, okay? Now let's get into the colors. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure we're setting our white balance correctly. Now, this isn't something that you can do when your footage is in log because it's a little hard to know what colors you're kind of dealing with. So after you add the contrast back and you still haven't touched any of the saturation sliders, that is when you can start to work out if your color balance is accurate or not. Now, in my opinion, things look a little bit green here. I need to add purple, I was about to say purple. So things look a little green here. So what I might do is just slightly change this over to the purple slide side ever so slightly. I might have shot with a little bit of an incorrect white balance, which is obviously bad on my part, but things are just a little bit green there. So if I just move it over to the purple side ever so slightly, that kind of corrects that tone there. And then things that are a little bit cool, so we might be able to warm them up a touch as well. If we warm it up, actually cooling it down is a little bit of a nicer vibe. You know what, for now, we'll leave it as is. I'm happy with how the colors balance in the image and we'll be able to play around with this when we get into the color wheels and we'll be able to really dial in our look, okay? Right here in the creative section is where you can apply your custom LUT. But like I said, we're skipping that for now. And now we get into the curves. Now this, of course, we've already got our tone curve dialed in, so I'm happy with that. 
Now we get into the color curves. Now this of course is very different to the tone curve, but this is where we get to play around and push certain colors in certain areas. So just before we dive into this, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a lowdown of what I want to do. First on the chopping block is changing these greens to be a little bit darker, richer, and more green. That's the first thing I wanna do. I also wanna make sure this red on uh, the, the head dress, if you will, is standing out a little bit more as well and is a little less orange and a bit more red. And I would say I'll be happy with those two changes there. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna to come to hue versus hue. We're gonna set two in and out markers around the green section here. And then I'm just gonna drop these down into the blue area a little bit more. And as you can see in the background, that's where we're affecting. So we're just gonna push these into the bluer kind of part there. And then we're gonna to come to the red section and the orange section here. And we're just gonna move these up a touch. Now that will slightly adjust the skin tone, but I actually don't mind that because if we turn this off, you can see the skin tone is still a little bit green. And then when we turn this back on, it gets to nice of a, a nicer, redder tone, and it also helps us out here. Now, a little hack, if we come over to effect controls here, this is a way to make sure your skin tones are always on the money. If I come into opacity and I draw a quick kind of a little mask around a skin section there, and we come back to our Lumetri scopes, this line, this long line right here is the skin tone line. So your skin tones should be sitting on this line. And if they're not, you need to go and play around with your hue versus hue, your white balance and your tint. So for us, we're pretty much bang on the money, which I'm very happy with. You can actually see it's still a little bit on the yellow and green side of things. But in my opinion, I really like how it looks. If anything, if you can see here, if we move this up like that, you can see the little line moves, which is our skin tone, our selected area. So if we bring this down maybe to about there, that's probably sitting a little bit nicer in the middle. And then we can come back over to effects controls, delete the mask, and now we're left with this. And this is looking really nice. Okay, so now we've got the hues sorted out, we can play around with the saturation. So I'm gonna draw the same kind of dots right here. We're going to just decrease the saturation of the greens in the back. We are also going to just increase the, uh, the red right here. So now that's looking really strong. And the reason why I decrease the greens in the back is because while I want them to be darker and richer, I don't want to make them overbearing and stand out. So the way I'm gonna make them a little darker and richer is come into the luminance curves, if you will, and then, oh, I don't wanna, I wanna put that back. There we go, Command Z that. Right, I'm gonna set the same kind of parameters here, just like we did before. And now I'm gonna drop the luminance of those greens in the background and then we're also going to drop the luminance of that red right there. So if I turn this off and back on, you can see the red and the green in the background is now a little bit punchier and things look great. And that's pretty much all I'm looking to do with the curves. Something I always wanna do when I'm color grading is make sure I'm turning the Lumetri color off and then back on to see how far we've gone. So we started here and now we're here. Things are looking really, really nice, okay? Now let's dive into the color wheels and match. Now, you might have noticed earlier in the video when I was trying to make things a little cooler, I said, ah, we can leave this for the color wheels. And this is where it's gonna come in. So what I wanna do is make this smoke a little bit bluer. Kind of make these, uh, the white parts on the, on the headdresses a little bit bluer right here. And it's also going to affect any other part of the image that is quite bright. The way I'm gonna do that is by coming into highlights here and just adding some blue. That's all I'm gonna do, all right? Now, just from doing that, we've made this kind of impact on our shot. It looks really, oh, this impact on our shot. It looks really, really small and minute, but these tiny little changes are the ones that add up and really compound over time and actually make the, the color grade what it is. Now we get to play around with the shadows and midtones. So I'm not 100% sure where I wanna push these right now. I don't particularly wanna make them warmer. Maybe if anything, a little cooler. I'm actually happy with the shadow tone of things right now. So we'll leave it as is. And then for the midtones, let's see what we've got here. Blue does look nice, definitely not orange. What we might do is just add a little bit of blue. Hopefully that's not too much. You know what it might be? I might just leave it for the highlights for now. I think anything else is gonna to be too overbearing, a little too strong. So. I will leave it as is. Now this is pretty much where we're gonna finish off. If I wanted to really get nitpicky about colors, I could in the HSL secondary tab, but I don't. I'm really happy with the tones in this shot, so I'll leave it as is. And then of course, I'm gonna come in here to the vignette to just really make sure we're focusing in on our subject and I'm gonna drop the vignette val uh, I'm gonna drop the vignette value, I should be saying. And now we've gone from this to this, which is looking great. And that vignette just really helps us focus in 
on our subject. Now, even though this vignette looks great, I do wanna dive into my masking workflow because it's gonna make this image pop even more. So what I'm gonna do here is open this drop down menu right here and then hit add lumetri color effect. Now what this has done, as you can see over on the left hand side in effect controls, we've now got two lumetri color effects. This one is our grade and this one is currently nothing. This one is gonna be mask number one. I'm gonna open up this then select the, uh, the circle mask and we're gonna drag this out over the entire shot, just like this. But now I get to control things a little bit more. So this is gonna be our custom vignette. So I don't wanna darken this part of the shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend that out and then I'm gonna come down here and make it like this, all right? Now what I will do is we'll increase the feather. This just makes sure there's no hard edges. And then we'll also increase the expansion. Oh, oh. Hold on, we'll also increase the expansion, there we go, to just make it a little bit bigger. All right, so now it's kind of fluffy on the outsides. There's no hard sort of lines anywhere and we will just kind of taper this in a little bit. We really want our subject to stand out here. Now, if I go into basic correction, which is uh, where we're gonna be doing the vignette and I just drop the shadows, we're playing with the inside of the mask. What I need to do here is hit invert and now we're playing with the outside of the mask. And just here, I'm just gonna drop the shadows just slightly. I'm gonna click off so the mask disappears, click back onto the clip. And now if I turn this off and back on, it's so subtle and slight, but I really like the look of how this looks. Now, I'll be honest, usually my masking workflow can get you know, 10, 13 masks deep, 15 masks deep. But for this shot, I actually really like the way it looks. If anything at all, we might add one last mask. I promise we won't get into anything absolutely crazy here because this shot just doesn't need it. Sometimes shots need more work than other shots, but this shot is looking great. All right, so we're gonna create a little mask around here and I wanna desaturate these little areas. I think they're a little bit distracting. So we'll increase the feather once again, but we shouldn't have to play around with the feather all too much because we're only trying to affect these shot of these little parts in here. We'll increase the expansion as well, then come into curves. And then what I'll want to do is I want to drop the saturation in here. So I'm going to pick up this little dropper because I don't specifically know where this lands on our, um, on our color spectrum. I'll click, pull, uh, cool, not pull. <laughs> All right, so now Premiere Pro has given us our color parameters. I can now remove these other dots because I just want to make it a little bit bigger so we're not really just affecting one specific color because there's a little bit of a, because there's a little bit of a color range in here. So I'm doing that by holding command, it's control on Windows and then just clicking on the dots and now we can come in here and just desaturate it. And as you can see, if I turn this off and then back on, they're far less in your face and distracting. And I think that is starting to look great. Last thing I wanna do is come back into our main grade and then just drop the shadows ever so slightly, a little bit more, come into the curves. We just wanna add a little bit more punch and contrast here. And just like, oh, maybe we're in a little too far, just like that, affecting the shadows down here we have now finished our color grade. So we have gone from this to this, and then plus these two little masks, they add just a little bit. And right now I'm stoked with this shot and that is this shot color grade. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you're able to learn some stuff about my color grading process as well. If you and you around here, a subscribe would mean the world. If you wanna speed up and just fast track your whole color grading process, go and check out my Cinematic LUTs linked down below. And as always guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.